Hello there, everybody. My name is Rafael Chacinas Nuez, el Capitan Rafucho, and welcome to another episode of Let Them Speak, which is a debate between sports and entertainment with some special guests debating all these certain stuff that we're looking into it because right now it's our water news, the the trending, all sort of about this. But before the UFC 298, so I have a special guest right here. So it's going to be like a truly amazing. Well, you might know as one of the part of the uh, the best MMA channel on YouTube, which is Against the Fence. And this guy right here is totally amazing. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you to Mr. Taylor as newest Canadian bacon. So how's it going? Welcome to Let Him Speak with El Capitana Fucho. So how's it feeling? Ready to get a little bit of great action of UFC 298. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, man. It's an honor to to be on the show, to talk, to give, you know, the opinions on this great upcoming event. So, yeah, I'm really yes, excited. Well, yes, it is, because right now let's get involved for this one. So, all right. So the first topic we're talking about for Alessandro Volkanovski versus Ilya Tuporia. And I know there's certain things about for the UFC 298, which is on Anaheim, California. But I just really thought it was going to be like at a very impact that will be really dominated. I mean, they just look at it about for, because it's kind of the mentality of this one here, but I think it could have some like better cardio, footwork, and you cannot negate the wrestling impact of Ilya Wolnowski. But I think that he literally attacks and defends separately as well as some straight but he believes that the conference need to do it with like a finish ability. But it's a matter of fact that Alexander Volkanovsky he's very great at grappling style, also for also for a knockout. But also he was going to get involved because he was a former rugby player. I mean, yep. he's he's definitely had like a the powerful guy. But he's he's better in it because if you're not going for a lose to thirty minutes of your life and then come to an ambulance asking for a single punch, I mean. Volkanovski isn't starting to pull it aside. In. I mean, he's not like, like an opponent. He had to lose to one little mistake. I mean, he's been there for like since his debut in 2016. And then he won the belt in 2019 against Matt Holloway. I mean, he One doesn't have to that much power. But he's definitely had the solo difference to make the fight easier. I want to talk about that Volkanovski will make it a hard Make this fight a lot harder to Tuporia, but it's going to fight against Emmett. I mean, if most of the alias ones are by submission, if he's hunting yep. for a knockout against the bulk, he'll be like an opponent beating because he doesn't he doesn't go for submissions. He doesn't knock out for people with one punch. Even Ilya gets knocked out, he has a still chances to recover. So he's getting like a more aggressive. So it's like a complete original thing. And I gotta tell you for this one. Um, how are the possibilities to go between Alexander Volkanovsky versus Ilya Tuporia? It's going to be like a new champion or still had to go to champion because I know it's going to be like a 50-50% of our chances. Yeah, um, to be honest with you, the fan base seems to be a bit divided when it comes to this subject. You know, a lot of people are just uh, using Volkanovsky's last performance as a, you know, as a way to kind of predict how this fight's going to go. And what I say and is the same thing that a lot of fighters say. Every fight is different. You know what I mean? And uh, not to take it away from Ilya, I think that his 14 fight win streak and the amount of finishes he has, you know, how he's been pushing himself up speaks for itself. But I have seen a lot of surveys online, a lot of polls done by YouTube channels and other things. And I've seen roughly like a lot of them around 60 to even 80 percent of people voting think that Volkanovsky is going to win this fight. So as you said, I do believe that, you know, Volkanovsky maybe not having the finishing factor in terms of punching power will definitely benefit Ilya because he does. Um, but just, I don't know, just the fact that he went toe to toe with Josh Emmett uh, and did as well as he did in that fight, you know, it just, it sp spoke volumes. Uh, it, it's hard to pick him in this one, but I am going to go with Volkanovsky personally. I think that as you said, his wrestling um, might give him the edge. And it's not that Taporier cannot submit him because he is very capable of that, as you said. But it's like, I don't know, man, he survived Ortega. To me, like that, that gained a lot of respect. Just Ortega is quite a submission specialist. And just to be able to survive that guillotine that he was in 
you know, once you can get out of something like that, you can get out of anything, in my opinion. Mm, that's a really a fact because I think that because you can't like Volkanovski can finish, but he doesn't like a one punch power. I mean, the Tupori yeah. would look at an opportunity to win there. So when he shows up on a level, let's not make any excuses. And Tupori is calling like the shot. And I feel like then we forget that the top fighters in each division pretty much had to good chins because that sport is is anyone to get caught. Because of that, yep. because people had the conditioning and genetics to eat bigger shots to do better. Also, if you do it like they had stout, I mean, it, if they had mats, we take your bulk or strickling or fight someone against not at the top 10, that will be in the will echo in the first fist rhetoric. It kind of surprising to hear the MB has to drop with a couple of cat hits. I mean, uh, if really can do it like a catch him, it's more like a he understands the stand up that the competition is about to make because it's going to be like to promote the fight and all the book is fat fleeing. And honestly, it is going to be like because it's been like because after he just saw them at this performance against Islam Akabech, yep. I mean, on on that one, but it means that it's going to be like a really stock. But I think that after he was doing October of Saudi Arabia. I mean, he take it to the opponents for the decision, but he really, he most of the opponents have much room to get in the offense, and he doesn't make any kind of mistakes once he's getting finished. Because unless you have Aslan Makovic, you're basically not going to win the rounds against him. So that will be, yeah, be like the main point. I agree. I do agree. You know, he's very dominant in terms of like, uh, you're not going to outscore him for the most part. You know what I mean? I'd say he's very relatable to GSP in that aspect. You, you're going to kind of want to look for the finish. Uh, I don't know. It's not that you can't. He is getting older, and that's what a lot of people try to say. I liked his jokes at the press conference personally, where he was going in there with the old the old cap on, and he was falling asleep at the press conference. Oh, I yeah, thought that was really funny. That. Yeah, that was <laughs> because that, that was one of those things that went viral on social media when I was in the yeah. world. Stay on character with the glasses on. It was like a old man dresses up. It's like, oh my god, that was like one of those stuff. So you cannot write it up. So I was. It, wow. it was hilarious, but I think that might actually be playing an aspect. I know it sounds weird, but I just hope Ilya Tapore doesn't sleep on him. You know what I mean? Assuming that just because he lost his last fight that this will be a walkthrough. And I feel like how Volkanovsky is acting about this whole situation is luring Ilya Tapore into a false sense of security, possibly. You know what I mean? He needs to be mindful and he needs to understand that it's not an old man. You know what I mean? It really isn't. Like, uh, we've seen. To be honest with you, even when you mention it, mention it before, you know, you need a good chin. You need a good chin to be at the top. And even when we see where the divisions where that starts to be a factor, like with heavyweight, the most defenses in heavyweight ever is three in a row. And it's like that for a reason. It's because you just get clipped. You know what I mean? You get clipped and you just don't have the, the capability of, of dealing with the shot. Um, I'm going to say the same thing about that head kick. I know it's, I'd like to see how many fighters in the UFC could take that head kick from Islam Makachev and be competent in that fight afterwards. Not a lot. It was a very good head kick. It was placed really well and it had a lot of power. So, you know, I feel like people definitely shouldn't sleep on Volkanovsky, but also shouldn't count out the fact that Ilya Tepourier can, can win the fight just like that. If he, if he makes the right choices or if Volk makes a mistake. Mm. That's very fair. That's very fair that um, I don't see a bit. But let's move on to the next topic right yep. now. So we just talked about for Alexander Volkanovsky versus Ila Tuporia. So there's another thing that about for the main car, but also for the main car, they just had Murav versus Sejudo, which is like yes. a completely like a very important to see the, the both fighters. I mean, if, in case of the Murav, Henry has been talking about retirement and how the loss is done, but Mara has been focused on like a nine fine win streak. And mm -hmm. I think the pace and the Mara will take it too much for Sakura. I think he's going to win the decision. I mean, if he's very confident that he's working with Aljo when he's going to be at help, it's going to be a great team around. He's very smart, younger, but also it's going to be like a go for the focus. But for Hendry, I know it's been a, like a lot of things, but he certainly had a lacking for a mental focus, but he's had a, like a physical prime coming up for a loss. 
but it doesn't have like you know, many physical adventures. But I see like a Gamer, which is their style, showing up with being 37 in Bantam Well, he doesn't have Suhudo at all. I mean, it, they could have a good control, but either they can the knockout can hold the other down. So I was really responding to accept it in general. That's a tough fight because Morab is like the real deal. Like the real oh, for deal. Sure. But I think in generally is it, it, it could be like the worst matchup. He's gonna stay champ, but I think if if he's gonna lose it at least it's three rounds, but he can use it like he's striking to stab with Mara at a few times and the fight's going in at the decision. And that's one of those times that it should main like a fight night. Top talent and probably decide to challenge it to that a new golden, you know, the golden champ. I don't mean and also the condition of the making it happen. And make it happen. It's gonna be like a very interesting, but it's gonna be like a super, super, but I'm taking it with this one because if Henry Sukuda they say, well, my one title chant didn't work out, I'm retired again. So it happens a lot when it comes for that. But I think Mirab has to go on another level. His fight against Johnny is probably the most intense performance that we ever see, strike after strike, it's, take it's after true. take down, seemingly like no dip in power, speed or explosiveness. And he wasn't even breathing hard. So I was just like, wow, this is going to be like more interesting. So it's going to be like it happen because right now that is seen for the Bantamweight because I know the actual champion for the Bantamweight is none other than Sean O'Malley. So yes. there's going to be like an body intensity. There's going to be like a who's striking goal, who's going to be retired. So anything can happen in this fight between Mara versus Henry Sejudo. I do agree. Um... But I also agree with your first statement, you know, that I believe Marab really has his head in the game. I believe he's really growing into it. He hasn't seen a setback since Ricky Simone, as you said, that was what, nine fights ago? So a long time since a setback. And to me, he's just improving with each performance. You know what I mean? He's still got youth on his side. And it's not that Cejudo can't get it done. But as you said, I believe his mind is also focused elsewhere. You know, he's when you say you're going to contemplate retirement, you know, your head is in a different place than when you were competing at the highest level. And that's what he's trying to do. You know, he's, he's trying to make one last big push to get back into it and get the title back. And, you know, there was that stuff with his coach leading up to it. So I feel like there's a lot more on his plate, you know, whether that was a joke or not about him uh, releasing his longtime coach. Um, I don't know if you saw that video, but there's a video where he, he said to his coach, he's like, I'm getting rid of certain coaches for this camp and you're one of them, you know? And it, there's a lot of drama though, that's kind of been surrounding Cejudo during the buildup of this fight. Right. So he's definitely got his mind on other things. And I don't know if that's really going to be the best for him. I think overall his caliber of wrestling is maybe on paper at a higher level than the Rob's. Maybe he won't be able to show that, but I think, for Cejudo to focus on victory, he needs to utilize his wrestling defense to stop Marab's takedowns, and he needs to focus on beating him on the feet. And that, that's easier said than done, because Marab is no, uh, no slouch when it comes to striking either. So I really think when it comes down to it, Marab has an advantage in a lot of these things. You know, um, Strength, I think he's a bit bigger. Uh, I think Cejudo is a bit... Under not undersized for bantamweight, but I think he's a smaller guy uh, at bantamweight as opposed to how how he had an advantage at flyweight. Um, so we'll have to see, but I, I believe Marab will get it done. But I think it'll be a competitive fight regardless. I, I'm looking forward to that. Mm, that's very good. That's very good because I know that it's gonna be like a because Henry is 36 now. At the lower yes. weight division is gonna be like a bad news, but I think that Marab all works him, but. I think that it was able to dominate John because John could have time counter to the concept take on the Thames. Because if the commentary had to say something, but I think that he was first he called King with the skin good gaff kicks. Also, he was throwing up with a bunch of strike. He was trying to take him down. But what I don't think it is gonna be like if Henry is gonna do better, he's gonna be more chewing to do something with a high need to counter Mirab, just like he did to Cruz. I mean, yep. he has a very good low kicks when he plays more ability to shoot. And he can be like to attain some smacks. He has no problem with just marching or whatever to continue to push into the face. But in the case of the point with fight with Morales, he was certainly. But I think that it's opening up for the knees, like Knicks and 
be willing to take it. And now it will be a little difference. But I think I think it's gonna be like the, to get it done and get it at the winner of Cheeto versus O'Malley, which is on Miami. Mm -hmm. And I think it's gonna be the seriously who's gonna be the best Bantam one there it is. It's gonna be like a massacre thought that Henry was in a very good fight, but who knows about it? I mean it it's gonna be like the best matchup, but Murray has the weakest punches and so who has to wrestling not for take down game, but he could have yeah. put it under a little uh, title shot, but it's gonna be like a who's gonna who's gonna earn the title shot. So it could have been like at a at the position side of the Ben Town with the way with the safe. Yeah, at it's the a number Benton one contender with... fight. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Also, we're just gonna to move on to the next topic. So I know you're wondering how this is gonna be to the UFC with Hunter, which is in state in Las Vegas, Nevada. So it's gonna be like a lot of rumors. To be who's gonna be the UFC to in Hunter main event, and when Dana White did say the main event is gonna be announced at the post fight conference, and everybody's talking about and who's gonna be the main event of the UFC the number three hundred. So it's yes. gonna, mm -hmm. so it's gonna be a very interesting, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be like it's gonna be like taken for the surprise right now, but. I think it's gonna be like in a new way division, so it's gonna be retired. But um, here's one like a here's some of the few rumor fights that it should be like this one. So I think it's gonna be like between Stab Music versus Tom Aspinall. Also, they just got a lot of things between uh, EC, which is um Israel Sandaya versus Alice Pereira, or mm -hmm. maybe like a rematch of uh, between Kabi versus George St. Pierre, but it basically had to go because the fans they just want something bolder, bigger at the UFC 300, and the main event is gonna be like really important because right now they just announced it a lot of a lot of stars in the UFC 300 in April, which is on Las Vegas. So they yeah. just announced it like between of Justin Gage versus Max Holloway. Also, they just got Holly Holm versus Kyle Harrison. Bobby Green versus Shane Waller. Also for the uh, lightweight tail eliminator is gonna be uh, Charles Oliveira versus Armand Chascur. And but for the main event, I think it's gonna be like a lot of mystery. So who do you think who should be deserved as the main event at the UFC 300 main event in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is on April? Okay, first I'm gonna go over the non-realistic ones quick, right? So yeah. obviously. Who wouldn't love to actually see the fight between George St. Pierre and Khabib finally? You know what I mean? Like that, that was, that was more or less blocked by the UFC uh, when it was going to happen. Both fighters wanted it to happen. George St. Pierre was making his way down so that he could make lightweight and Dana more or less blocked it. So I feel like a lot of fans want to see that. Obviously there's a lot of hype for Brock Lesnar in some form or another, but I'll be honest, Brock's getting old and there's no way he'd become, if he tested positive last time when he came in against Hunt, there's no way that he'd be able to t test negative this time. Uh, he's still using the same stuff. He's got to keep himself big. He's getting older now. And uh, he hasn't been in the testing pool. So I don't think that's a possibility. But coming to the real ones, I guess, more or less, we hear a lot. There's like, we hear Izzy versus uh, DDP, Drikas Duplessis. We hear uh, a rematch between Sean and Drikas. We hear... Uh, the possibility of John, they asked John Jones if he could fight and he did comment and say that he would not be ready for UFC 300, but they did ask him, uh, you know, I do believe apparently they're trying to put together Chemayev and Leon Edwards for the welterweight title as the main event. And I believe that that's pretty hype. You know, I wouldn't say that that's exactly what I'd want. That's not the biggest fight the UFC could have made to headline this in my opinion, but it's not the worst, right? Like Chimaev, you know, he's got a huge fan base of his own. And as you know, Leon, I love Leon. Leon's got fans all over England, all over Europe, all over Canada. So I think that uh, that could be an interesting fight if they make that happen. Um, and then I've heard, you know, um, Chimaev, or yeah, I've heard Stipe versus uh, Aspinall. Um, and even at the beginning, they were talking about John Jones versus Aspinall for UFC 300. So I think there's a lot of possibilities, but I think the most likely one is probably either Izzy and Andrikas Duplessis or Chemayev and Leon Edwards. Um, yeah, but Ariel Hawani seems to think that they're, they're really trying to put Chemayev and Edwards together for 300. 
Mm -hmm. That sounds great. And I know there is a lot of big things that are coming up for the UPC 300. And I know the main event is still like, and even Dana White is say they're going to announce it after the the post-fight conference. I mean, it's going to be like an ministry threat. Who knows what's going to happen because we are like a very excited to see what's going to be headlining the UFC 300. So uh, I just wanted to tell you, that, um, Mr. Taylor, the Mr. Canadian Bacon, thanks for having us for this episode of Let Him Speak, talking about for the UFC between Alexander Volkanovsky versus Ilya Topuria. Also for another fight coming up for the Anaheim, California, which is on Saturday, which is very incredible because... Right now, Saturdays are for the boys because watching the UFC and it makes everything awesome. And right now, that right now we're just talking about for a little bit who's going to be like the main event of the UFC 300. So, uh, Canadian Bacon, last thoughts and where can we people then find you on the social media? Because right now, the, I know you're a part of the social team as known as the, uh, the Against the Fans. What are the best? MMA YouTube channels, and I love to see like one of those incredible stars that I just got for against the fans, uh, live streams, uh, reactions, also people talking on around the streets. Who's gonna win this fight? So, give us a lot stars, and people can find you on the social media. I appreciate the uh, shout out. Obviously, you know it's an honor to come on here and represent uh, against the fence in any capacity as a member of the team. Uh, you you can find me at Taylor Simons on Twitter. It, it has a Canadian bacon in brackets or Canadian bacon on YouTube. But yeah, uh, follow me if you, you're interested. You know, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk about the sport that we all love. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, right now, this is Rafael Chatsin as no el Capitan Rafucho. You can follow me on social media that Capitan Rafucho on Twitter, that el Capitan Rafucho on Instagram. Also, you can subscribe me on YouTube as Rafael Chacin, El Capitan Rafucho, and boom, there's live streams, reactions, videos, and everything. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's been another episode of Let Him Speak, talking about sports entertainment with debate, news that are trending. So, I will see you there next time at the next episode. So, have a good one, folks. Have a good weekend, and let's go.